So what we've seen so far is, is how to define a polytope over a set of vertices. So um, our the vertices we have were a half, zero, zero, a third, and then uh, a half, a quarter. And then once we've done that, we can draw the set around these points and our, our polytope is all the, the points inside. But you might also see that there's another way of defining these points. Without, without, the, um, uh, without the vertices, we could say, actually, OK, imagine cutting our entire space in half on this line, OK? And all the points this side are not included. So this is, this is the so-called this half space. Similarly, we'll get rid of everything on this side and only consider this half space. Similarly, only considering this half space. And finally, this half space. OK? So if we simply found a way of cutting our half space in two, uh, sorry, our space in two into a half space and deciding which half space, we can get a polytope as an intersection of, of half spaces. But cutting a, a half space, cutting a space into two, we've, we've been doing that for, for quite a while. It's, you know, if we, if we say I want all the points x belonging to r such that um, x is less than or equal to three, that's me just going, okay, there's the real nine, there's x equals three, and so my uh, sp half space is this, okay? So we've been doing that for, for a long time, and so what we simply need to, to do is identify which a half spaces corresponds to each of these boundaries. So this particular half space if we consider our x to be equal to x1 and x2, where, where this is going to be x1 and this is going to be x2, well, that particular half space is just going to be that we need um, x2 to be greater or equal to 0. This particular half space is just that we want x1 to be greater or equal to 0. Um, we then have this half space here. Now, that's just that. x1 is less than or equal to a half, OK? Um, and then we do actually have another half space here that we're kind of omitting because it's, it's superseded by, by this half space here. But that this first one right here is just that we want x2 to be less than or equal to a third. Now, this particular one is the only one where we need to do a little bit of work. That's a straight line. I mean, all of these are straight lines, right? Um, that's a straight line, and that corresponds to x2 equals a third minus a sixth of x1. And we can work that out by, by going, OK, when x1 is 0, right? Uh, we know that's got to be a third, so that, that gives us that. And then similarly, when x1 is a half, uh, we know we must get a quarter, and putting the numbers in, that, that's, that's the line. So that particular line um, creates the half space where we want x2 to be less than or equal to a third minus a sixth of x1. And we can just write that in a slightly more compact form. If we multiply everything by 6 and add x1 to both sides, that's x1 plus uh, 6x2 is got to be equal to less than or equal, is got to be less than or equal to 2. And so these half spaces are an equivalent way of defining our uh, polytope. And another notation we can use to define a polytope, and this is completely equivalent to the other one, um, is to say P is equal to the set of uh, 
vectors in a particular space, r to the n, such that ax is less than or equal to b. So for us to be able to do that, we need to do a little bit more work. So we've got a less than or equals here. and uh, Well, I mean, first of all, we've got the ax. So hopefully we're, we're okay with the fact that this vector of x1, x2 with, co with um, the variables x1, x2 can be obtained as a, as a matrix product. And we just have to do a little bit of work to, to flip the inequalities in the right way. So we get that it's minus x1 less than or equal to 0, minus x2 less than or equal to 0, um, 2x1 less than or equal to 1, 3x2 less than or equal to 1, and x1 plus 6x2 is less than or equal to uh, 2. So this is in essence b, and then our, our a we can just read off from that, and we'll, we'll get that a is going to be equal to minus 1, 0, 0, minus 1, 2, 0, 0, 3, and then 1, and 6. And that's another way of defining our polytope P. And this is, in fact, the way that we're going to use it. So we're, we're going to define our, our polytope uh, P based on a game where our, 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 the, the payoff matrices are going to lead to this, this matrix here.